In Western New York, a barbecue stand that burned down at last summer's Erie County Fair says that it is now ready to make a triumphant return. Weedner's Barbecue announced today that it will keep its 62 year tradition at the fair alive despite last year's fire. It's a new beginning for us. Definitely sad to lose the old uh, location and stand, but all you can do is move forward and uh, put your best foot forward. Yeah, Weedners is going to be getting a new location this year. You're going to find it on the Avenue of Flags right near the Conservation Building. The 179th Erie County Fair starts August 8th, just 62 days away. It's right around the corner. Oh, my goodness. We I love a good smell. comeback, though, don't we? Mm. Yeah, we do. Weedners, yeah. very yeah. good. Good yeah. barbecue. I only Excellent. had one thought about stoking up the barbecue over the past couple days. It was what? just to stay warm, Kevin. Oh, it's a little oh. bit chilly outside this morning. I, you know, we try to put on some air conditioning in this room, and I got to tell you it's got to be like 90 in here and then Miss Demler will walk in and say oh it's just perfect we're <laughs> dripping wet over here. Yep, everybody's been talking about Chick-fil-a I love Wienders oh, barbecue very good the Erie County Fair you gotta have mm. it you get you get your your fried dough and you go get your chicken and you kind of put the whole thing together it's gonna be a great weekend I promised it let's get to it partly cloudy tonight we're going down to 55 degrees and a southwest breeze that's a little bit of warmer air coming up Nice sunshine for your Friday, 75 tomorrow, so maybe a degree or two warmer than we were today. Simply, and that's exactly where we should be. We're going to be in the mid-70s uh, again, and whatever rain is even thinking of coming this way, I don't think it's going to make it out of Pennsylvania. There may be a drop across our southern tier, but Saturday's going to be a dry one. Ditto for Sunday, upper 70s Monday, hello 80s on Tuesday, much of the eastern third of the country. Again, no problems whatsoever tonight at Nice bubble of high pressure is doing the job, but there's something going on to the west. I'm going to take you out to Laramie, Wyoming, right along the 80. Take a look at what they had to deal with earlier today. And let me tell you this, residents only had 15 minutes of warning before this decided to arrive on the landscape out there. Do we have it, Jimmy? Our little, uh, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Look at this thing. It was on the ground 45 minutes. People only had literally a 15 minute warning from the weather service. Look at this tornado. All right, now for the good news. No injuries, nobody was hurt. Thank goodness it was in a land that wasn't, uh, again, with a lot of residents out there, but look at what they have to deal with out to the west. All right, let's go for, back from Laramie, Wyoming, and we'll bring it back into our backyard. We're gonna be dealing with a couple of high level clouds. That's gonna be just about the story tonight and for the better part of tomorrow. 72 degrees now, 76 up in Niagara Falls, a beautiful night on the waterfront, and I think a lot of these people would wish and they were kinda out there. We don't have a traffic jam on the lake. It looks like right along uh, the lake shore <laughs> right along uh, the uh, I-190. They're having a little bit of traffic congestion at this hour. Temperatures will slip into the lower 60s during the overnight. They'll be there when Patrick is with you in the morning. Wind's not a real factor, but they're out of the southwest. And as far as our satellite and radar is concerned, yeah, there may be some clouds and a little bit of rain to the north, but everything else is looking real, real good tonight. And when we go to future look, you're really going to like this. Stop it tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, no problem. Let's go through Friday. Stop it again. This is now 8.30, Saturday morning, no problem. As the afternoon progresses, look at this, Future Look doesn't even bring the rain into New York State. Here we are Sunday morning at about 8.30, so an early round of golf, Allentown Art Festival, no matter what. We may have a couple of very light showers coming our way, but that's not till Monday afternoon. So 75 degrees, looking for a sunny day tomorrow, northeast winds 5 to 10. On Saturday, partly sunny, northeast winds about 76 degrees. You're looking for a warm up, aren't you? All right, here we go. Probably the low 80s on Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday of next week. If you need a forecast update, call us on our weather link at 852-2222 online. We're there all the time at WGRZ.com. Hey, let's get down to the waterfront. Tonight is the beginning at Canal Side of their great concerts, and our Kelly Dudzik is doing the reporting tonight. Hey, Kel. So, Kevin, we had to move a little bit away from Canal Side. We're near Templeton Landing because the music during the sound check wasn't super family friendly and we couldn't put it on TV. But there is one security change you need to know about for this year. You can bring bigger purses this year. They can be 12 by 12. Other than that, everything is the same 
as it was last year. $5 gets you in, and if you bought a ticket ahead of time, that same $5 gets you a drink voucher. The security line is running smoothly so far, and we haven't heard any complaints about anything. They sold 7,000 tickets ahead of time, and the general manager of Canalside tells me he expects 10,000 people there tonight with the nice weather. And if you haven't been down to Canalside in a while, you might be wondering where you should park. So here are his expert tips. It's like any other downtown arena event, uh, I personally tell people either park at the Bisons or park on the uh, surface lots by the Cobblestone District there, uh, right next to the arena. Those are always the easiest in, easiest out, typically at you know the rush hour time. Because if someone you're inside the gates, there are plenty of food trucks and bathrooms. And a reminder: leave your backpacks at home. Channel Two News First at Five continues after this. Yep, we have some slow traffic on a bunch of routes at the moment, including the outbound 33. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Paul here live at the NFTA. Looking at the 190 South over here on the far side of the screen, really slow through the downtown area. The delays start right near the Skajakota. We did just clear an accident here uh, at Church Street, uh, but the delays continue for several miles beyond this all the way to the 90 interchange. 190 North also at a crawl out of the downtown area all the way to the Peace Bridge. Then it clears out, then really slow again when you get closer to Grand Island. We did have an accident on the outbound 33 right near Bailey. That has since been cleared, but a several mile back up back into the downtown area, and that is really slowing things down, taking a while for that to clear out. Also have some delays on the 90 east and west in Cheektowaga, especially near the 33. We do have an accident as well, closing Walden Avenue between Town Line Road and Ransom Road there in Lancaster because of a dump truck that had rolled over, and they're cleaning quite a bit of debris up. Uh, so no word on when that will be reopening. And that's a look today at Traffic Tracker, traffic tracker 2. Back to you, Scott and Mary Alice. Thank you, Paul. Well, the death of handbag designer Kate Spade has brought suicide and mental health back into the public conversation this week. And today, the CDC put out a study with a disturbing finding. Suicide rates across the country are up. They're up almost a third now over the last 20 years. Here in New York, it's up more than 28%. Mm. NBC's Erica Edwards takes a closer look at why. Police confirmed Thursday that designer Kate Spade's death earlier this week was in fact a suicide. Her husband revealed the fashion icon suffered from anxiety and depression and had been getting help. In a statement Andy Spade said of his wife's passing, it was a complete shock and it clearly wasn't her. There were personal demons she was battling. 
It's a situation facing thousands of other everyday Americans. Suicides are increasing across the country in all age groups, in men and women. The Centers for Disease Control reports a nearly 30 percent rise in suicides since 1999. Only about half of those people had a diagnosed mental health condition. Many who died by suicide had been struggling with substance abuse, finances, stable housing, or personal relationships. Doctors say there are warning signs a person needs immediate help. Any change in behavior patterns, withdrawing, sadness, irritability, anger, and losing their temper more quickly, those would all be indicators that possibly the person's mental health is deteriorating. The CDC emphasizes suicides are often preventable. If you or someone you know needs help, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. The number is 1-800-273-TALK. Go ahead, pause the TV, get a pen, anything you need. Once again, it's 1-800-273-TALK. I'm Erica Edwards, NBC News. Well, thank you, Erica. And again, there's always help there for people who have thought about suicide. Right here in the Buffalo area, you can call the Crisis Services Hotline to talk to someone any time you need to. That number to call, and it's 24-7-834-3131. Ahead at 530, days after a beating at a Buffalo Charter School that shocked an awful lot of Western New Yorkers, we're now hearing from the school tonight. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. We're staying there. Test one, two, test one, two. Ever. Three, two, one, mic check, mic check. Poor girl. Well. A one and a two and a one, two, three, four. Did that? Uh, did I not give you a good enough clue, uh, cue on that uh, tornado stuff, Jimmy? And it all goes right here on me now. Slamming my metabolism to a halt. Oh, oh boy. 90. Hamster will be. Pardon? Hamster will be throw. Hamster. Hammer. Oh. oh my God, yeah. Oh my God, yeah.
Right now on Channel 2 News at 5.30, we are working now to get more answers about a brutal case of bullying that's caught Western New York's attention. Plus, history in the skies over Western New York with a huge event ready to take off this weekend. And the incredible connection between a police officer and the man that he pulled over that neither of them ever saw coming. Well, new tonight at 5.30, two days after a girl was assaulted in a local middle school, we're now hearing from the school about what happened. And that young girl's mom says that her daughter, who attends the Charter Middle School for Applied Technologies, was bullied and then assaulted in a school bathroom. Channel 2's Jeff Preval has reaction from the school. Carla Warren says her daughter Twana still gets dizzy two days after suffering a head injury in an alleged bullying incident at the Charter Middle School for Applied Technologies. This was an extreme horrible assault on my daughter. Warren says two girls known for bullying went into the bathroom, saw Twana and attacked her. One girl pushing Twana into a sink, causing a large gash on her forehead. Many parents have gone to Facebook saying bullying is an issue at the school. Does the school feel that bullying is a widespread problem at CSAT? No, we don't feel that that is something that is on the forefront every day. We have parents coming forward saying that there's been instances of bullying. Uh, those instances are not being reported back to us as administrators. School leaders say what happened Tuesday had nothing to do with bullying. That was students who were, in essence, horse playing. It escalated into an assault. Allen says there were other students who witnessed what happened in the bathroom and say that the students were all laughing and joking and then things got heated. Twana's mom says her daughter was left in a pool of blood for 10 minutes, but the school says that isn't true either. Within two minutes, a teacher was in there and had called the appropriate medical response team. Twana is being seen by doctors and wants to go back to school, but her mom isn't so sure about that. Back at CSAT. Is Charter School for Applied Technologies taking any steps to change how it does things? Right now we're not taking any steps to change anything as much as we are communicating what should be done in the case of, of a, if a parent has an issue. Now that, in, that includes parents reporting a bullying incident on CSAT's Bully Stop page. Counselors will be meeting with all homerooms to speak with students about nonviolence. Meantime, the two other girls involved in the incident have been suspended pending a superintendent's hearing. Now, one of them has been charged with assault, and that case is being handled in family court. I'm Jeff Perfall, Channel 2 News.